I'm a registered nurse. I work in a newborn nursery. Um, have for 10 years. I've done a little bit of everything from ICU to diabetes education, uh, newborn nursery, a little NICU, and um, soon to be an office nurse again so I could have my weekends to ride. My ex-husband and I had had a Harley and um, I fell in love with Harleys at that point. I mean, I always loved them, but actually having one as opposed to just you know, watching them ride by and going, oh God, I love that bike. Um, I actually had one and uh, it was a nice bike. And uh, then uh, for years I was by myself and then I met Bob and we were married for quite a while and didn't really have any plans on having a bike. And we went home one day and his brother bought a, a, a Hartley, but he was going to sell it. and. Uh, so Bob and I looked at each other and went, well, why not, you know? We had that for a couple of years, and then um, we bought our first new bike, and it was a street bike. We joined the hog chapter then, and um, um, had some really remarkable people, and um, our best friends through, through that. And we had that for a, um, probably a year or so, and we started riding more, and. Uh, the hog chapter had taken a trip out to Colorado and it was like, man, that sounds like fun. I really like to travel. And I said, and I'm not traveling on the back of that. You need something more comfortable. Like, That's fine for around here, but not out to Colorado. So I bought a, um, bought a street glide. And uh, I was like, yeah, I can ride on the back of this. I'm definitely ride on the back of this. But before that happened, um, before we could take a long trip on the back of his bike, um, I learned to ride. Uh, I'd always wanted to, I was afraid to, um, but I'd see all these ladies pull up uh, at the hog chapter uh, meetings and I'd be going, oh God, I wish I could do that. I really wish I could do that. I think I could do that. <laughs> And um, Bob gave me the support I needed um, to learn. So I took a class like you're supposed to take a class and uh, dropped out of the class because I had dropped that bike more often than uh, they had had in the entire season. Um, I remember Doug Gay very distinctly telling me he had done more paperwork on me than he had on anybody else in all of his years. And on the last day I dropped out. Um, to save him from flunking me. <laughs> and uh, so I called Bob and I said, uh, I'm going to be terribly disappointed that I've dropped out. And he goes, well, no. He goes, are you done with the idea of riding a bike? And I said, no, sir. I said, I definitely want to ride a bike. I just want you to teach me. When he thought I was ready, um, he bought me. Um, it was a used bike. It was a soft tail deluxe. Um, I had talked to the other ladies about what bikes they were riding, and I said, well, you know, I thought I'd get a, um, a Sportster Love. And they're like, nah, you don't want a Sportster Love. You'll have it for two or three months, and you'll just get a soft tail. Why don't you just go for the soft tail? So I bought a soft tail, and uh, it had been lowered. A friend of ours from the chapter, and it was his bike. And he's about my size. and. Uh, it lowered it for him, and I sat on it. I was like, yep, this is my bike. And that was Rosie. And uh, I had been riding Rosie for maybe four months, and we went out with the hog chapter to the Smoky Mountains and rode that tail of the dragon. And that was a really big thing for me, for having been riding just a few months uh, to ride the tail of the dragon. That was pretty cool. But when you learn to ride in Arkansas um, with the pig trail and, and 12 and 62 and 90 in Missouri, um, Tale of Dragon is, you know, just a, a, a stepping stone. And, uh, so we uh, decided that that's how we were going to do our vacations from now on. And I said, well, in that case, I need something to cruise control. So, 
I bought a 14 CBO soft tail. That was my 25th wedding anniversary, 60th birthday present. So, kind of uh, riding on that. I think I had that <clears throat> one week or two. <laughs> um, we, the new hog group had started. Um, Bob was the assistant director. And we went out on our first chapter ride. And um, you have to understand, we went down, uh, we were going down the trail. I've been in Cape Trail probably 40, 50 times. And um, <clears throat> going around that first hairpin turn, um, I scraped. Not my first time scraping. Um, but on my new bike, it was the first time. And I went, oh, I shouldn't have done that. And I went off the side of the road. And there are probably 30 or 40 of our best friends behind us. Um, and uh, Bob was leading and I was behind him. And um, Lisa Bale was like going, God, that's a beautiful bike as it's going off the road. And uh, she, uh, she called out um, on the radio that I was off the road. And um, Dave Patterson, who um, one of our hog members, he is a medic, and he um, he got to me first um, before Bob could get turned around and um, stabilized me. And uh, I just kept asking for Bob, and I got there, and when Bob got there. He's like, okay. He goes, are you? Uh, are you hurt? And I said, yep. <laughs> and he goes, do we need to call an ambulance? I said, we need to call an ambulance. And uh, so uh, we called an ambulance. So I got a life flight out of it, the first helicopter ride. Not how I wanted to have my first helicopter. I got to the hospital. And Bob was uh, a couple hours behind, of course. And uh, got there. And, they had done an x-ray and I had broken my arm and I knew that because I'm a nurse and I'm laying there triaging myself. It's like, no, I can move my feet. I'm okay. My toes are good. Uh, my arm's not though. Um, the doctor came in and he's like, well, you broke your arm. I'm okay. He goes, what's that little bruise you got right there? And I said, I don't know. And he goes, did you hit anything? I said, went over the windshield. That's okay. Let's, let's just do a chest x-ray. Did a chest x-ray. Came back. He goes, I'm going to do a CT. I'm looking at Bob going, that's not normal. You know. And um, so I got the chest CT, but um, did the chest CT and the doctor came in and he had the results in his hand. He goes, you're a nurse, right? And I said, yes, sir. He goes, okay. And he just handed me the paper and let me read it. And um, they had found a mass. Um, they had found a mass. And told me that I probably had cancer. And um, Bob and I had a moment. <laughs> and um, said that, that was probably, the doctor said that was probably the luckiest motorcycle accident he had ever heard of. That it had probably saved my life. So, um, our best friends, we met through Harley Davidson. We had dinner and told them. And then um, my 60th birthday came up, and we had some of our, our good Harley friends, people that we rode with all the time. And um, we told them at my birthday party um, and asked for their support. Um, can, can matters 
um, was a guy who sold me a bike and one of our very dear friends. Um, he was there. I had told him ahead of time. And um, I got a lot of support from them. So um, when it turned out, I had to go for a biopsy, and it did turn out that I did have cancer. And um, Bob and I really relied on our hog family. Our families all were in Indiana and, and Texas, and um, so our hog family stepped up, stepped up to the plate. My first day of chemo, there was a hog member there. And when I started losing my hair, I asked um, Ken and Keith Ford, who obviously um, had shaved their head and had lots of experience. I said, well, I know this is going to happen. I need you guys to do this for me. So we had dinner at our house, and they, um, they uh, shaved their head for me. And it was a really, really hard day. <laughs> and they made it so much easier. And they're, um, they all became my strength and Bob's strength. And um, it was a rough, rough, um, rough go of it for a while. And um, I would come in here, and every time I felt really bad, I'd come here. Um, they'd all have hugs for me and um, just all the love and support that I got from my hog family and my pig trail family um, got us through it, really got us through it. Um, and the fact that um, I had overcome my fear of um, getting hurt <laughs> to learn to ride a bike. Um, um, I figured when they told me, you know, what was going on and the diagnosis and everything, it's like, I've got this, I can do this, because I read a Harley. I overcame my fear of that. I can overcome this. I can't walk through the doors without the service guys. Um, hey, Bonnie, give me a hug, you know. Um, it's a good thing my husband isn't a jealous guy. <laughs> Otherwise, uh, you know, we'd be in big trouble. But um, um, all the guys there, they've just been so supportive of um, my efforts in riding a bike and stuff like that, and so proud. Um, when I finally rode up on my, on my um, on Rosie, they were like, oh, they all came out and joined me and, and stuff like that. Uh, Ken, um, Ken sold me two of my bikes, so, um, and he just always had that extra, extra touch, um, you know, um, would always call and say, how you doing with it? When I wrecked my bike, he personally drove the, um, the trailer down to pick up my bike, and he had said basically, you know, Bonnie's now on pig trail. I'm going to get her bike, and uh, everybody was just like, go, you know, he's like, I've got to be the one, so, um, David Boyd, <laughs> Bonnie, I've got some bling for you, i got bling for you, <laughs> and uh, um, Bob curses his name a lot, because I'm always buying stuff, but uh, David is, David is wonderful. He always has a hug for me, always. Um, Tina and Teresa, they, you know, they're always there for me, and, and they've been so supportive. I've never, never had such support. I have a really bad sweet tooth, and Kyle always has this uh, big thing of uh, jelly beans on his thing, and I go in and I steal them, and pretty soon. If I was across the room, Kyle come out with a scoop, and he'd find me. He'd go, well, you walked past me. You know, I, well, you had somebody in with you, and I didn't want to bother you. He goes, 
here. <laughs> and he'd bring me a scoop of jelly beans. I don't know where else you could go, you know, to get that kind of um, love and affection. I really don't. Um, I know a lot of people um, were a little stunned um, the first time they saw it. Um, Frank came up and gave me a hug, and I, I thought the staff members were going to drop their teeth because <laughs> they're like, Frank, <laughs> you know? Um, he's been incredibly supportive of me too, and Paul. Um, anytime I see Paul, he's always got a hug for me and ask me how I'm doing. Um, it, everybody's been so, so supportive and Dusty. Nobody's, there's nobody like Dusty here. Nobody. And uh, he always has a hug for me. And um, when I told him that I had cancer, um, he cried. And uh, he's, every time I see him, he's like, how you doing, sweetheart? How you doing? You know, always has a big smile for me. And there were some days when I just was so tired and so sick. And, um, Bob would say, what can I do for you? You know, how can I make it better for you? I said, take me a picture. I need some hugs. When I learned to ride, um, I found joy. I found joy in family and strength that can get me through anything.